Hello everyone, in this video tutorial I'll be going through segmentation on a partial arch. I'll also be showing you how to clean scatter and um, compare the difference between a basic cleanup versus a conversion service cleanup. So let's begin. We'll start off by being in segment and going on to segmentation wizard. The other options I would not recommend, it's far too complicated and far too time consuming. In this video tutorial I'll be showing you that even by doing a basic cleanup using the, the segmentation wizard, it is still sufficient to retrieve your buccal and lingual envelopes of your prosthesis. So this is what the case looked like when it first started. As you can see there's a lot of scatter. Now, I would not recommend using these sections here. They are different per patient, they are different per scan, and uh, it's all down to the dosage levels as well as the type of bone. So it may not apply with all of your cases. If anything, I would recommend using the custom bar and controlling the density from there. Let's zoom in just to look at it even closer. So, what we want to see is that in the soft regions we can restore some of the bone but not bring in too much scatter so we want to find a little bit of a happy medium okay so over here we can see that the bone is already starting to dissolve so we can't go any further than this point we'll keep it at this density and move along now it is asking to click on a bone point the 3D object that we are creating at the moment is the actual arch itself. So you want to click on the lower arch, on nice cortical bone. Whatever is connected to that surface will remain behind. And now we'll move on to the next stage. This ne next stage is the remove scatter stage. And as you can see, the scatter is always generally around uh, where the teeth are just above the crest and I will show you a very effective way of getting closer to the actual scatter and cleaning it up as close as possible so I'm going to click on this clipping tool on the right hand side and I'm going to click on actual plane notice straight away that when I'm flipping my actual plane is my uh, where my panoramic curve is slicing and um, actual slicer slicing. So what I want to do is view it from this direction and scroll up just to where the top crest is and you can see the scatter is starting to build up over there so maybe I'll just stay just ever so slightly short from that marker I'm going to look from um, from underneath. Now I'm not too worried about the bone that's below this point only because um, I've hidden most of that bone away uh, the bone that I was referring to is from this mark downwards so I'm preserving that area by hiding it and making sure that there's no way of me deleting that by accident I'm going to flip it from this direction and you can see the contours of the oppose well of the teeth so you can kind of mimic the anatomy and somewhat restore it in a way remember this is going to be a tooth supported stent if you were to order a stent and you would always um, restore the surfaces using an STL file or a study cast model we would never work on the guide directly on this file simply because the scatter uh, causes you to lose a lot of the uh, defined surfaces uh, and you will lose a lot of accuracy. You can cut this area as close as you can, avoiding the grey areas. By using the clipping tool, you are using the best of both worlds, both 3D image as well as the cross sectional. Uh, 2D images. Right, 
so let's see if we can get even further. So I can see a bit of haze here. So this is cortical bone here. This is just where the crest is. When I slice one, one more slice up, I'm now above this. And I can now actually shave this area off. There's also two radiographic pontics scanned in this case. And um, these are the pontics over here. You can either split them as a separate object in the next stage, or delete them at this stage and then bring them back later on another segmentation uh, section. I would prefer to delete them simply because they are looking a bit rough and uh, I'd like to uh, clean it up a little bit more, have it a bit more uh, defined. So what I'll do is actually delete this as well. Okay, I'm just going just above the crest there and now I'm just going to delete that there. Spend time doing this nice and slowly. Um, do not rush, take your time. Okay. We're almost there. You can kind of make out areas that don't look natural. There you go. Let's undo this clipping tool so that we can restore the entire image. Now we can see what is left behind. So if we need to do any little fine tweaking, fine cleanup, we can do it at this stage. So that's a bit of bone. Might have clipped on a bit of bone there, but that doesn't really matter. The area that you're going to be focusing on is in this region over here. And remember, when you come to import an STL file or um, send over study cast models for the guide itself, all this information here will be restored. Right, I'm quite happy with this uh, cleanup that I've done. So what I'll do now is I'll click on next. And this section is the section to separate. This is the section where you could have separated the pontics and that will split it as another 3D image, but I've decided not to do that. I'd rather bring it in on a different segmentation uh, stage. I'll click on next again. And for this particular project, I'll keep it at medium. Medium is the default setting of um, Simplon. You could also opt to choose the low uh, final quality of the um, surfaces, which increases your PC performance. But I would not recommend using high or maximum. It slows down your machine significantly and it could actually cause it to crash. So let's click on finish and see what this gives us. There we go. Right. I might have had my clipping plane a bit short earlier on, so I apologize for that. But the important bit here is to make sure that you can see your lingual and buccal envelopes um, uh, areas for your prosthesis. If I do the comparison of the two, you're really not that far off. So as you can see here, you can easily work with these uh, a, a basic cleanup in the segmentation stage in comparison to a, a, a professional cleaned conversion service. So as you can see, all this information lines up pretty well. Those are the Pontics over there, but it's gone back to the actual CBCT scan and you can see my pink model outlines the teeth contours perfectly. So even though it may not look absolutely perfect, you still got all the tools you need to give you the guidance to plan effectively. So you could either save the money and do it yourself, or if you're not too bothered, or you do not have the time to clean it at this level, then you, you could still opt in to send it over to our conversion service. Right, I'm now going to restore this section 
uh, uh, of the radiographic Pontix using the segmentation wizard again. So I'll click on segmentation wizard. I'll be zooming in. And this time, because my radiographic Pontix are at a much high density, I can reduce it right down. And uh, you can see by this image here that this is a lot cleaner to work with. So I'm now going to click on this radiographic Pontic, just so that my cross section goes onto that tooth. I'm going to click on next, and then my focus points will be on both of those Pontics here, so I'll click on the actual Pontic itself, not on the jaw. Okay, I've always obviously had a contact point to the molar, which in this case, I don't think it will hurt keeping it on. So let's just clean this excess and keep that root in place. And what I'll do is I'll use the splitting tool on the next bit to separate the two apart. It's actually quite handy segmenting a neighboring root in your project because then you can actually see how close you are to the neighboring roots when you're placing implants. Here we are, we've got uh, two separate split objects over here and I can set it so that I've got a low sort of finish or even a medium finish, either way, don't mind, and then I'll click on finish. That will finalize the surface uh, finishing touches. And once I bring up my arch itself, you can see clearly that when I'm toggling my 3D objects down here at the bottom, I can actually individualize those Pontics as a separate object and bring them on and off on the projects. So as I'm planning, I can show and hide them. Um, it is very, very useful to, to have these objects split. It gives you better control to measure things. Um, so if I click on the transparency tool at the top right of my 3D object uh, view, at the moment everything is opaque. So if I want my tooth root and my Pontix to stand out, I'd right click on the 3D object down at the bottom, click on transparency and click on opaque. I'll do that for the Pontix as well. Right click on the Pontic, transparency and opaque. In this way, even when you um, have implants in place, can even hide the jaw and see how close your implants are to the neighboring roots. This is very handy. Now, because I've only got one of the roots over there, I can also bring back this information here. Okay, I mean, you can kind of make out where the socket is, but it is a lot better to have a 3D object like this to stand out a lot more clearly. So I'm now going to show you how you can restore that canine as a uh, segmented tooth. We'll go on to Segmentation Wizard. Make sure your cross section is on the actual canine itself. Let's zoom in so that we can see what we are doing. Our focus point here is the root itself. So you want to dissolve the arch just enough so that you can see the root. Now if the root tip starts to dissolve, that is not an issue. It's the width that is important here because when you come to place your implant next to it, you do not want the width to dissolve and shrink because you need to know exactly that root, you need to know exactly where that root is. If the root tips dissolve, that is fine. You're not actually placing an implant from this direction anyways. So I would say this is a happy medium. I do not want to dissolve the root any further than this. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more cleanup around this canine. So I'm going to click on next. And I'm going to click on the actual crown of the canine itself because that's the object I want to remain in within my 3D cleanup stage. Right, so I'm now I'm going to click on next and I'm going, to, I'm going to start my cleaning process. So we know we've done all this bit here, so don't waste time, just cut that off without thinking. There we go. Most of it has already been um, removed. That's because there was no joining. Once I've cleaned that area off, there was no joining connection to this object over here, which is great. It saves you a lot of time in cleanup. 
we've just got a little bit of excess here so what we're going to do is just reshape that root so follow the contour of the root itself just delete that excess you could keep the rest of the pontex here it does no it doesn't do any harm the important bit here is that there's no excess on the uh, distal side of that canine because that's the uh, area of where the implant's going to be so this area here needs to be quite clean look from all directions and make sure that it is sufficiently clean i'm very happy with this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on you can click on next to identify the type of uh, resolution finish you want to work with or if you're happy with a medium finish that is the default from simplant you can just click straight on to finish right so let's activate all those little bits I'm going to make it translucent. At the moment, my uh, canines and laterals are still transparent as with the arch. I want those to stand out, so I'm going to right click on the arch, it's, uh, on the um, uh, canines and neighboring teeth, and click on transparency, and then click on opaque. This now makes everything um, stand out nice and clearly. So when you come to plan your implants and hide the jaw, you can see exactly how close you are. You can even rotate it and view it from all different aspects. Now, in comparison to the model that I created, you're really not too far off. You've still got the important bits there. So if I was to hide that jaw, you can still see that I've got my vital um, areas of here. Apart from my nerve, we still need to draw in a nerve. Please see video tutorials of marking in the nerve. That would be the next step after this stage before you continue over to the planning of implants.